This is the world's largest construction project and also one of the most controversial. The four letters that reflect the inordinate ambition of one country, Saudi Arabia, a huge region in the northwest of the country where futuristic cities are due to spring up. The line, Oxygen, Trojan, Zendala, and other new locations we'll see later. Between the 3D images and reality, how far advanced is the work? That's what we are going to find out today in this new video. Over the past few months, there has been a flurry of in at NEO, from big announcements to the start of construction of the site. All this while, the first elements of this administration of the future are due to be delivered this year. But as with any construction project, it's best to start with a solid foundation. So let's go back to the beginning of the story. Envisioned by Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, Neom is a futuristic project aimed at establishing an immense megacity of 9 million people in an area between the Red Sea, Jordan, and the Gulf of Aqaba. An immense expanse flowing in size to an entire country like Belgium, which will gradually see the emergence of buildings of a new kind. Until 2030, a symbolic date which corresponds to that of the country's journal plan vision 2030. This program aims to modernize the country and find a more sustainable economic model in anticipation of the end of the oil industry trend. The country seems ready to put in the money since the initial cost of the work was announced at the $700 billion. This investment is mainly financed by the public investment fund a staggering sum, which is set to increase in light of the announcements of recent months, in addition to well-known projects such as the controversial The Line 2, which will return at the end of this video. New companies have been added to those already under construction. One of these in Lyra, a tourism site that will be home to three luxury hotels. The promotional video shows Futuristic buildings set near the Gulf of Aqaba in the middle of a magnificent valley. A total of 120 rooms will be divided between the three buildings. The Oasis Hotel was designed by Maria Kiselena, the Adventure Hotel by Chris Van Dijen, and the Wellness Hotel by Sean Keller. Three architects known for their futuristic architectural proposal, Sean Keller, for example, is renowned for having designed the Museum of the Future, one of Dubai's most symbolic buildings. The promoters promise to preserve 95% of the natural environment as part of their promotion of sustainable ecotourism. This goodwill is unlikely to match the reality of the work to come, while computer-generated images show buildings in perfect harmony with their natural surroundings. It's hard to believe that the construction of such buildings will take place without damaging the site. For the moment, no date has been announced for the construction to begin. Other projects all on the shores of the Gulf of Aqaba have been unveiled. Most of them are new tourist destinations that seem to be reserved for the more wealthy. A clear attempt to strengthen the own luxury tourism in this spirit an even more futuristic creation was presented at Epicom, a future resort made of two immense class towers straight out of a science fiction movie. One will measure 225 meters high, the other 275. Leonard Melfort, one of the icons architects, makes a direct reference to the word of science fiction in the presentation video. It's hard to prove him wrong as the video shows the building appearing out of nowhere in the metal desert. The two towers along with the residences on the beach next to them are to house a Hollywood hotel and luxury stores with the highest standard of quality. This promise of luxury, relaxation, and eco-friendly as capitalism seems to go on and on. Fancy a top of the rain seaside resort head for Serana and its marina accessible only by boat. Another resort overlooking the sea 
is Narlana, a new tourist complex that at first glance seems less grandiose than the other constructions but still with the same promise of comfort. Last but not least, Equalum. This is a new fantasy that will take place on the Gulf of Aqaba. This new Camry is to be built vertically inside a mountain so that the buildings will only be visible to visitors once they are inside the marina, providing access to this new luxury living and tourist destination with a more cultural focus. Otamu has also been part of the frenzy of announcements in recent weeks on the Saudi side. A spectacular theatre set inside a mountain, this troglodyte theatre will be accessible by what, after wending through a specially designed garden and passing through this troglodyte theatre will be accessible by what, after wending through a specially designed garden and passing through the only monumental gate. The project's two architects envisioned a unique venue for art with a capacity of 2,600 spectators. Unfortunately, as with the rest of the buildings, this project is still without a delivery date. The last few months at Neom have been like a major architectural competition on the program. Projects each more insane than the last presented with great fanfare and skillfully orchestrated communication. Although they are all part of Neom and therefore a vision 2030, it's hard to believe that they will all be operational by that date, especially as the eyes of the country and the world will be on another part of Saudi Arabia Riyadh. The city has just been officially designated of the 2030 World Expo. This global event promises to attract millions of visitors. It is also an ideal opportunity for Saudi Arabia to showcase its vision of the world, particularly in terms of urban planning and architecture. One example is the announcement of the Macabre construction project, a gigantic queue 400 meters high, which is intended to become the new phase of the Saudi capital resolutely turned towards the future. Construction is scheduled for completion before 2030. Neon's influence will surely also be at the heart of Saudi Arabia's communic fashion strategy in 2030. But which buildings will actually be operational and which will remain utopias? The last few months seems to have given us the beginnings of some answers as certain buildings are taking shape on site. The first indication comes from information released last October by the project's promoters. Neom would represent almost 3,000 employees in the services department and 60,000 workers on site. These figures are difficult to verify as information on the project is closely guarded by the Saudi government. The only certainty is that life is beginning to take shape on the ground near the various construction sites. This is particularly true of Sindala, the luxurious island destined for tourism. Temporary town seems to have been established on the island's outskirts, according to satellite images. Time is of the essence since this complex of luxury hotels and marina is due to open in 2024. From the various videos available, there is no doubt the construction is well underway with container ships taking it in turns to bring in the materials needed to build the project. Sindala was Neon's most modest project before the latest announcements. It will feature an 86 bird marina, luxury service and three hotels. The luxury hotel group Marriott, which has signed a partnership agreement with Neon seems confident that the site will open soon. Indeed, on its website, it is possible to find numerous job offers for the opening of its hotels on the site. Finally, the green lawn of the golf course in the middle of the island stands in stark contrast. However, the rapid pace of construction leaves one wondering about Neon's ecological promise. As with the other sites, Sindala is sold as an ecological paradise of unspoiled nature. On the island, however, 
everything seems to have been remodeled. For the East, two other workers' towns have been established, named Community 1 and 2, were built in just a few months. On site, you can find public services, sport facilities, and even a Starbucks. These infrastructures are home to those whose mission is to bring to fruition the project of the line. This crazy project aims to build a vertical city of 9 million inhabitants over 170 kilometers long. The Titanic excavation work is still underway and from a bird's eye view, the route of the future line is becoming increasingly clear. Numerous pillars are also being erected along this immense route to support the future building, which will be almost 500 meters high. The infrastructure required for construction, such as the electricity transmission pylons, is also being installed inside. International companies are working to bring to life that still looks like Utopia, even more so than in the case of Sandala. The ecological cost of such a project is a major issue. While the line's architects promised fields of wind turbines and solar panels to make the building carbon neutral, its construction will generate considerable polluting activity for the many years to come. Meanwhile, construction continues on oxygen, a floating city intended as the port and industrial heart of Nyom. According to official announcements, the first terminal is due to open in 2025. It will be one of the region's gateway to the Red Sea, a vital artery for international trade. Another announcement is the startup in 2026 of the world's largest hydrogen plant to be financed at the cost of $8.4 billion. The first wind turbines, which together with solar panels will provide the energy needed to run the plant, were delivered at the end of 2023. Oxygen is also to include a residential and tourist section with a huge city on stilts for the time being, work on this part of oxygen doesn't seem to have started yet. To conclude this overview, let's take a step up to the winter resort of the future. Trajana, as with the other parts of Neom, the main advance concerns excavation work. Trajana, as with the other parts of Neom, the main advance concerns excavation work. This is perhaps even more important here as some of the surrounding mountains need to be leveled before construction can begin. According to the cartographic data, none of the buildings shown in the teaser radios has yet broken ground, but time is of the essence. Trojana is due to host the Asian Winter Games in 2029, a countdown that doesn't stop the developers from multiplying their announcements. The latest example is the unveiling of a 330 meter high skyscraper to be erected on the side as tall as the Eiffel Tower. It is to stand on one of the banks of the huge artificial lake that will be the centerpiece of the winter resort. The building designed by the famous architect Zaha Hadid is absolutely sumptuous, but like the rest of the site, it remains to be seen where it will actually see the light of the day. So that's where we end today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.